After a peak of creativity, our expectations can rise, and expectations generate anxiety and frustration, that being the exact thing we want to avoid during our creative process. A golden sunset witnessed this frustration. Hello, my name is Isaac Puy. On this occasion, I will tell you about this adventure on the highest point of Baja California, or Baja as some people know it. For new people watching my channel, I'm on the mission of painting and documenting different landscapes in my home state of Baja California, Mexico. This time I went to Sierra de San Pedro Martir, a remote place on the very top of Baja California. Here we can find astronomical observatories of one of the best universities in Mexico, UNAM. I've never been here before. It's quite a remote place and a six hour drive to get there from Tijuana. And quite a stretch of the road, it's completely empty which is why the observatories are located there. The Sierra de San Pedro was the first national park created in Baja California around the year 1947 and covers an approximate area of 650 square kilometers. After a four hour drive to the south, we pass through San Quintin and we begin our ascent to the mountain. From this point on, we go through a beautiful and remote landscape. I started with drawing with a red Prismacolor pencil that later I would try to cover with paint. I like to stop and appreciate the surroundings, listen to the sound of nature to relax a little bit and let go. Even though the time is short, this is an important part of my process. I really enjoy driving in such remote places, where the only thing contrasting with the scenery is a road tattooed in front of us. When I started painting, I used a yellow ochre to create a golden background contrasting with the ultramarine blue for the shadows. The first thing I try to achieve when starting to paint would be those distant colors. The trick is to use atmospheric perspective to convey distance, which becomes very prominent during sunsets. As we ascend through the steep curves, the landscape transforms into a pine forest, and you can feel the humidity in the air. Finally, we arrive. I thought it would be a small place, like Laguna Hanson from my last video, but no, it was huge and quite flat in certain parts. This was a huge surprise. It took me a bit to find an iconic place where I could paint and encapsulate the inspiration flowing from this magical place. Just before reaching the observatory, there was this spot where the entire mountain range could be appreciated. I had to hurry up because the sunset was pretty close and the light was fading away. The contrast between the overlapping trees illuminated by the sun and those that were not lit up was what captivated me. I had not planned creating a complete painting. I was just trying to capture the feeling and what inspired me at the moment. A photography can't really have all these things extracted in the same way as plein air does. In fact, the national park where I painted is not the highest point of Sierra de San Pedro Martir. But that is something I will talk more in the next video. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Stress and frustration always make themselves present at some point. After the last painting I did in my previous video titled Painting the Golden Magenta Grass, my expectations for this one were quite high. And those expectations can become a heavy burden, interfering with our creative flow. Almost towards the end of the process, there was one element that gave me quite a struggle, which was painting the trees on the foreground, the ones that were just in front of me. They played a vital role by framing the background, providing the composition with structure. Days later, finally in the peacefulness and predictability of my studio, it was time to tackle, finish up the painting and adding all those details. Of course, working on top of what I already had painted that day. I started painting from the background to the foreground adjusting color as I go, moving from the sky in the back onto the trees in the front. As gouache dries quickly, we have to work swiftly and decisively when doing gradients. I enjoy creating expressive brush strokes that summarize information, in this case depicting thousands of distant pines, some in shadow and others in light. After multiple attempts to fix it, everything finally fell into place. The solution was to add a bit more orange to the golden hue of the trees. Since these two colors are opposites in the color wheel, they create more contrast with the blue background. I've found that it's important to develop personal tools to cope with these lows that affect our creativity. Have you developed any of these tools? If you had, what are they? Be sure to mention them in the comments down below. 
I would love to hear them. This experience made me realize that sometimes we just have to keep going regardless of the outcome. In the end, it might not turn out as we want it, but that's what it's all about. Gaining experience and looking at the big picture was, at the end of the day, my tool for this painting. And with this, we've come to the end of the first part of the Sierra de San Pedro Adventure. I hope you enjoy it. If you did, please give it a like. Also, you can join me on future expeditions by subscribing to my channel. Thank you and see you soon.